Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com, your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out directly to me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com, for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch made from 2007 to 2010, a fascinating form watch celebrating early German wristwatch history. This is the Alango Unzona Cabaret in the spirit of wristwatches that would have been made by East German watchmakers in the first third of the 20th century. This is a rare form watch in the Lanka collection. In rose gold, the model, which is unisex, is a nice compact 26.5 millimeters across the case, 9.2 millimeters thick, and from lug to lug, it is 42.9 millimeters with a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. This watch is a gem, one of the most underrated watches in high horology. Uh, the Cabaret wears beautifully on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Think of it as more of a 38 millimeter round watch and you get the general sense of how it fits. It is low, it does have a sloped and stepped case flank so it'll slide under a sleeve. I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeter circumference and it really does wear quite beautifully. This is everything you expect from Longa, but it doesn't have the generic round case profile that almost everything from the 1815 to the grand complication shares. This is a unique case for a unique model, which makes it special. As you can see, the strap is large rectangular scale alligator leather, black semi-gloss, some bolstering to add thickness, monotone black stitch, rolled profile, black calfskin on the bottom, and you can see this is a brand new Alango Unzona factory strap in outstanding condition. A smart buckle, simple but a lot going on here. You can see the polished buckle is faceted externally, and then it has an elevated bridge. So you can see the prongs on the side, and the bridge is elevated somewhat above them, so that the strap sits inside the buckle rather than stacking up thick underneath it. You can also see there's a retaining bar or inside the buckle. That's there for those of us like myself who have small wrists. If we're going to use the smallest pinhole, sometimes punch a smaller one. A watch can get pinned on the pin, and it can be tough to extricate a tightly strapped strap. So you have this little retaining bar to prevent that situation from coming to pass. As I mentioned, this case is very different from other Longa watches. There's an echo of the round watches with the lugs themselves being somewhat stepped out, but this is nothing like the somewhat hackneyed round case design that's been iterated a million times in every size at every price point. It has a lovely flowing tiered case with the polished mid case, the stepped out lugs, and then a tiered bezel. And you can see there's one tier of the bezel, and then there's another tier adjacent to the crystal, which creates a nice a first, third, 20th century, almost art deco inspired look. You can also see that there's a lovely camber to the case and a curvature to the sapphire, which is matched by the bezel. It is very elegant. You can also see at the edge, the bezel has been faceted to match the faceting and corners of the case. Now there's a simple crown, a pusher adjuster for the panorama datum or the outsized date that you expect on long watch. The crown is longer branded and then the dial features a lovely diamond style applique hour indices and applique rose gold roman numerals at the quarters the dial is matte black. It features a sunken concentric grained a guilloche sub seconds with a cross hairstyle format, a lovely frame in rose gold for the double date, and we have handsome alpha style hands at center. Take note, there is hacking or stop seconds for precise setting, and the watch, though black galvanized, is actually made of precious metal sterling silver. So gold on the outside, silver on the inside, and then a movement that is, figuratively speaking, very much solid gold. It is golden-hued, that German silver material, nickel, copper, zinc, with the copper giving it that golden tone, just as it would have looked in the pocket watch era. You have a pocket watch style, three-quarter style bridge. You also have pocket watch style pivot jewels set in golden chiton and then fixed into the bridge using fired blue screws. And for that matter, you have both fired screws and black polished screws. This watch includes both. The cover for the escape wheel and the swan's neck regulator are also manually black polished with diamond paste. And then you can see there's freehand engraving of the balance cock, so no two are exactly alike that's done manually with a burin. You could see glasuta stripes across the bridges. They're not Côte de Genève because we are not in Switzerland. And then if you look, you could see a lovely mirrored bevel on the edge of the bridges. It's as rounded and lustrous as anything you'll find from Patek Philippe, Laurent Ferrier, or Vacheron. Uh, taking another quick look at some of the features here, uh, technically speaking, it's a 30-joule movement that's 
properly sized and shaped for the case, which is a feather in its cap because, again, most longa movements uh, tend not to be shaped. They tend to be round movements of various sizes. It is a 42-hour manual wind power reserve with stop seconds, and it beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour with all of this water resistant down to 30 meters. In short, it is pretty close to the perfect dress watch. Nothing not to love here, and again, unisex viable, a lovely and rarely seen model from a company that only makes about 5,000 watches a year to start with. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.